If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Whoa. Mind to Pumpa. For 47 minutes, Adam, Justin, and I do our normal current events conversation. By the way, we... Uh, break this all down for you in our show notes. If you go to mindpumpmedia.com, go on the podcast uh, tab. Go to the show notes. It shows you like minute by minute or like, you know, whatever, what we're talking about. Okay. So here's what we talk about in the first 47 minutes. Adam taps into his nurturing side. Oh, oh man. Very, very so nice. Sweet. We also talk about Justin's new grill. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's so hot. Rocking I want to kiss him. We talk about yeah. Adam's Spartan weekend and my speech uh, for the athletes at the Spartan race. Aroo. That was good times. We talk about Justin's Organifi green juice and shake because he can't eat that much because his teeth oh, are kind of sore. Organifi is one of our sponsors. By the way, if you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you will get a discount. Oh, and we also talk about Adam using Organifi probiotics whenever he eats Five Guys Burgers. Helps, helps him not poop himself. Uh, we talk about Saves the day. Elon Musk deleting his Facebook account. What? Good time to buy Facebook. That should take that Zuckerberg down. That's right. And then we talk about the, the time some nerd fight. We talk yeah, about nerd some, fight. <laughs> nerd fight. We talk about the time some asshole's roof ran into Justin's truck. <laughs> Was that yeah. That? Come on, guy. I didn't even see it. You know what I mean? Jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also mentioned Viore clothes. Uh, we are sponsored by Viori. If you go to Viori Clothing, that's V U O R I clothing.com forward slash mind pump, you get a full 25% off your entire order. Fire. Then we get into the questions. The first question was about Adam's programming and planning and his nutrition for recovery. He has a Achilles tear that he's healing from, he had his hormones uh, that were down a little bit. And he's uh, doing a full protocol. He's kind of listening to his body, but he goes into detail. Part of that protocol was using the Juve red light. If you go to Juve, J-O-O-V-V dot com forward slash mind pump, you get a discount. And the other thing he was using was infrared sauna. The best one, of course, is Sunlighten. If you go to sunlighten.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get free shipping. That's like $600. Man, just plug in these guys. I'm hoping if I plug them enough, they'll give me one for my house. Exactly. (laughs) The next question was, what Make is the happen. weirdest thing we've ever seen someone do in the gym? These stories get crazy. You won't believe we've that We've seen one. a lot of weird shit. Crazy stuff. A lot. Next question was, what's the greatest life lesson each of us have learned from each other? Uh, I love learning from uh, Justin and Adam and Doug. Um, and I talk we about We love that. learning from you. So. Thank you. I, I, was, I was fishing for that. Yeah. And finally, hug. the last question uh, since we advocate such a holistic approach towards fitness, what are our thoughts on like natural healing? I guess that means when your body just heals itself or when you will your body to get better. Um, is that a uh, quackery? Is that science? What is our opinion? Find out in this episode. Also, uh, we're, we're nearing the end of the month. Um, this month's promotion ends when the month is over. So if you want to take advantage of our promotion, which is free access to our awesome forum you know with, you want to get in our forum all you got to do is enroll in a maps bundle uh you got to do it now you got to do it now before the month is over again free access to our forum if you enroll in any maps bundle bundles are when we combine two or more maps programs together for a particular goal our most popular one being our super bundle which is one year of exercise programming for more information on those bundles and our individual MAPS fitness programs, go to mindpumpmedia.com. I came in here and uh, on <laughs> Friday or Saturday. Was that know. your thinking noise? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I came in here Mine's on... <laughs> brain is processing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it was Friday or Saturday. I don't remember what fucking day it was, but Taylor was in here recording, so that's why your mic is off. In here? Yeah. He was like talking on the mic. Yeah, he, him, and him and his uh, his home girl. They've been working on this little project for a while now. I don't ask a lot of you know. I don't ask Mysterio a lot of questions. Just kind of, <laughs> just kind of let Mysterio him do, added. I let again. him do his thing. But when I, you say Mysterio, it's he sounds like a Mexican wrestler. It, yeah. You know, with the mask. It's why it fits so Kinda, perfect, dude. Yeah. Mysterio. <laughs> Speaking of which, I watched uh, Coco this this weekend. The cartoon. It is great. It's really good. You watch yeah. it? I, yeah, I've seen. I watched that when I was in the theaters. Really? Yeah. You know what I hate about cartoons nowadays? Hmm. I get emotional. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. They're, they're so powerful. No, it's because I have kids. <laughs> yeah. So now when I see a well, kid, they make them tragic now. Like uh, Pixar kind of fuck. like created blame that it on formula. The, blame it on the kids. Yeah, yeah. they're like, no. oh, everybody Hormones dies, changing, and now we're gonna, like, I never got emotional watching a cartoon ever until I had kids. <laughs> First time it happened, Finding <laughs> Nemo. He loses his son. Son, fl- the, right? the the cat, and I'm like watching the dad go after his it's son. Like tragic. My son was only one or two. And I'm looking at my boy like, what if what if like, I lost oh my, my son? God. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Ugh. it makes us all pain. Yeah, and then I'm watching Coco and the fucking, you know, the kid goes to the land of the dead. And then they show the dad singing to his little girl. Yeah. And the little girl sitting sitting on the edge of the bed and he has to leave his little girl. Yeah. And I'm just like, I know. That's so they just, they just do that sad on purpose. that this cartoon character had to do Speaking that. Speaking of babies, I, was, I went and saw, this weekend I was out of town to go. Oh yeah, I saw you holding a baby. Yeah. You know, you look good. You look, that's the, you look it, good holding it a baby. <laughs> Does it fit me? Yeah. You look oh, really God. nice. It fits in your arms. Holding a baby. Dude. Oh goodness. Yeah. And you had a smile on Softens your face. Softens you up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It, you had a smile on your face that was genuine. It is, I like, will. cool kid. You it know, it, it like, is uh, a little surreal for me with my best friend like these are my this these go back we go back to elementary school right so these are my two two tight tight friends out of all my friends they're they're both they both were pregnant so his my other buddy's wife is still she's on i think she's like four or five months deep and then he just had his so it's his firstborn it's a boy hunter preston gorgeous baby uh it, it's uh it's, so seeing them have kids because we were always together as i mean we were kids yeah. together and we always talked about like not settling down and getting married till way later in life. Not have, like we all that, which, that trips me out that we're thirty seven and thirty six, and just now everyone's starting to have kids. Starting to have kids. Like we made that pack like early on in life because, and I think a lot of it came from. I mean, they they were with me during the early years with my my dysfunctional family and stuff like that, and so it's obvious where mine came from. You know, I was like. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not fucking settled down and yeah. getting married for. I ain't signing up for any of this shit. Now, did it change him? Now that he has, a, I mean, it's soon, right? He just had the baby, but is he, was he different at all, or what did yeah, he say? You know, it. it he's definitely. Uh, it's this. Um, it's. I, 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 I'm going to use cute for a lack of a better word, but it's it's cute to see his, the, his personality with the, the, his his boy. You know, like he's just. He's trying like so hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and you can tell he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, right? Because oh, it's yeah. like, and I, he's done all the classes and he read the books and he's done everything like that. But I mean, I'm sure you guys will attest, like, you don't know until yeah. you until it's no. there, right? No. Nope. And so watching him kind of like, I still I, don't know what I'm doing. I was, no. I was, I was holding the baby and stuff and felt him shit, you know, like, oh boy, he just shit, dude. It's your, <laughs> here you go, dad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Hand him back yeah, over to him. That. Yeah. So watching him like do that for the first time. Now, I was the oldest, so I had, and I have, Two younger siblings. Did that you are, change diapers? Oh, yeah. all that. You know, what I'm saying they. We, I have a ten and a fifteen year gap between the two of them. So, I very much so was used to having babies and carrying babies and changing diapers and doing all that. So it was funny because they, they they were kind of or Katrina and um, somebody else were kind of teasing me. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like, this is why I, part of why I'm not a father is I've already felt like I've done a lot of this stuff mm-hmm. already. Like I. Could re- I can swaddle the baby real quick if you need me to. Like I can burp him if you need me to. I can wipe his ass if you need to. Like I just don't want to do any of that shit. That's all. But I, I remember I remember when my because my son's my oldest when he was born and you treat this newborn like they're made out of glass. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're like, oh my god, don't move him. Especially then, leaving the hospital. Yeah, and then, oh my god. But then the nurse takes your baby wrap. and the the nurse scoops it up like a football. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> when they swing the baby around, they're like, whoa, you're gonna break him. Yeah. But they're like, no, 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 they're fine. Yeah. yeah they're way they're way more resilient yeah, than yeah, you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I would move them so slowly, like, shh, nobody oh, make us. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, don't 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 break the baby. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you look good with the baby, dude. Thank you, man. I could see your heart. Yeah. Your heart's ready. Oh God. Who knows? Rosy you know what I'm saying? Who yeah. who knows? I don't know if I I you see you see too, like instantly the life begins to revolve around the kid like my we even we, we have nothing scheduled on the calendar for all of us friends to get together because everyone knows that like well fuck justin's gonna have a kid right now his whole life is changing yeah yep. you know what i'm saying so there's a part of me that's kind of sad too i'm like ah oh, fuck just dude, go it's, over there it's, visit it's the progression man go yeah. over there bring bring food you know visit a little bit hang out with the baby i, I think we're gonna create a relationship with that little the, the little boy too right, right right oh yeah no i already gave him his first outfit and gift we came from uncle adam for sure so i'm Did you get him viore do they have viore baby gifts? <laughs> 
<laughs> they should. Uh, no, I hooked him up with start the... Start him off, right? Yeah, got, Justin is a diehard Warriors fan like I am, so he, I got him the full Katie get up with the shirt, the shorts, and the shoes that match and everything, so that's what I hooked him up with. There's no indoctrination Speaking going of on. Viore, did yeah. you see our boy? So Matt Vincent's in town. He, came, he flew in on Friday. I love that guy. Yeah. So do I. And he was hitting Justin and I up to hang out. He doesn't like Sal that much. And so yeah. he was hitting Justin and I up to hang out this like, weekend. Like the cool kids. You know? yeah. <laughs> he yeah, likes the like, cool kids. I want to do cool stuff. And so we're, we're not scheduled to see him till tomorrow. And I, I said, oh, dude, we'll come down and just say what's up. Or There's a great coffee shop across the street from us. And we're recording. You can use a facility. So he showed up today. And he was rocking the same hoodie as you rock. I mean, it's a different color, but yeah, he had the one with the gray, and yeah, black. the gray and yeah. black of Viore. I'm like, oh, look at you on I the know. on the Viore swag, getting up down, on the Viore bro. game. Guy, guy owning his own clothing line, he's still buying from Viore. Good shit, man. No, that's, that's gotta what, say something, right? right? Right. That's what I said. It's yeah. good shit. Look nice on him too. No, yeah. no, it's a sh- it's a sharp fit. I Adam, you, uh, Justin, excuse me. You look. Um, Really handsome. Hey, thanks, man. Like, really handsome. More <laughs> handsome than before. I, I would, like, Talk- stop you if you were lying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm going to own it. Dude, you got to tell everybody what happened this weekend. Dude, so Friday, I um, I basically took off after we were we had, like, a scheduled recording that, that didn't work out. But uh, I went to go actually visit my friend from high school. I connected with this guy. I was at the gym. And one of my friends was like, dude, did you know, like, Tim, he's he's a dentist. Like I had been looking for a dentist to kind of do some work for me because what I needed done is like super expensive. This was a while back when you first met him, right? Yeah, a while back. And I'd been chopping it up with him and didn't even know he was a dentist. And I guess he's like one of the best dentists in the Bay Area. And he's he's all over the place doing big commercials. And anyway, he's really putting himself out there. But he's really honed in and mastered his craft on this whole like cosmetic dentistry. And so what I need done is it, it sucks. Cause like, you know, there's no, like none of the insurance I have is covers any of this shit. And it's like, I really need it done. Cause my teeth were like grinded down to like nothing but gangly. Like, and this is cause you grind your teeth when you sleep, grinded my teeth. And then the acid erosion, it was like this perfect storm of a, like this clusterfuck in my mouth. Mm. Right. <laughs> so that's a good movie. <laughs> By the way, that's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, continue. Yeah. It was a good movie. Uh, but yeah, so I <laughs> clusterfuck in my mouth. It was, yeah, <laughs> I'm Googling. It, it's yeah. a fun, yeah, it's a fun movie to watch. Um, yeah. So I, I basically was, I was like, Oh shit, you're a dentist, dude. We got to do something. And so he, um, <laughs> so you, we got to do something, we gotta do something to help me out at your art. And I have fucked up. I teeth. have things. <laughs> I have a podcast, you know, we're a match made yeah. in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> help me, bro. And so I, I went to his, 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 uh, office. And so we worked it out. So I was able to go and he, he did my, my upper teeth and uh, it was funny, man. Like, so I, how, what is that? What do they I have, have no do? idea what to expect. So you got veneers. You got veneers. So what's the deal? What do they do first? So what they do is, so basically they have to grind down like your existing oh, teeth, right? Grind? They they grind it down. Wait, with what? Like a like drills? A, oh shit! Yeah, they got a bunch of different types of You're drills. Awake? And I was awake, but I high as a kite, though, right? Yeah. Awesome. And only, only because I requested it. Like, I actually <laughs> asked him ahead of time, like, can I talk about this on the show? Because I was like, dude, you're giving me, like, nitrous. You know what I mean? And so he's like, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll hook you up or whatever. <laughs> hook you up. And so, I'm, <laughs> it, he, you know, you wear this, like, uh, piece over your nose and uh, you're, you're breathing this, like, the whole time. What does it feel like? Oh, it felt like, it felt, I just felt calm and just chill. You know, and I was just like, I was just, like, loving it. But uh, if I didn't have that, it would probably have been super uncomfortable. So what's the grinding? Oh, you could They're feel They're just over- drilling the whole time. And you see like bits of teeth, like sparks oh, and shit. Sparks <laughs> flying out of your yeah. mouth. Dude. dude, I was like sitting in the chair. I was like, if I didn't have all the amenities of modern technology, it would have been like medieval torture. Oh. You know, like people just like hovering over you, like making jokes, like ha ha ha, this and that. While te- bits of teeth are flying, it's flying in the back of your throat, like it's <laughs> fucked up. So when they dr- when they grind them, do they just grind them straight up, or do they have to shape them? In a well, they're shaping them and and sh- and basically molding it to where this it's, thing just locks. Yeah, right so up they there. just they just like attach this piece over it. Were you able to look at your teeth before they put them? So on? you're not like so. He's like, I don't know. Uh, one of my friends had it done, and he kind of forewarned. Warn me is like just don't, don't look at your face. Like, <laughs> don't you know, look, don't at, look your- at it like <laughs> mid process, right? So I was like really curious, and I was like I can't help it, dude. <laughs> no. I have to. So he he took a break, and uh, he went in the other, you know, to visit on one of his other uh, patients, and, and so I 
got my phone out and I was just like, I look around, <laughs> I grab my phone and I'm looking at myself through like, you know, the, the you know, the photo and, uh, turn it on myself. I look, I was like, Oh my God, I look like a, like a hillbilly. What, what <laughs> it was like this gangly, like Gus Chiggins looking fucking oh, face. No, dude, just no. Like you've been chewing on rocks all oh day. My, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was so freaky. I, Did oh, you take a picture of it? No. Oh, ah. I can't, dude. I couldn't let that live. Like somebody would have mined that on Google and then that would be my face like forever. You know, oh, it was, it was terrifying. It was a fucking terrifying look. Oh man! So now you got the new teeth. Does it like is it weird eating? And you sound the same. Yeah. No, I was actually worried about that, and we were joking about. I, all of a sudden, I'm gonna get this lisp. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, oh be, shit! Yeah, so great. You yeah. traded fucked up teeth for a lisp. I don't know which one's worse, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, give me the bad teeth back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this, th these are actually more like this. The temporary, so uh, it doesn't have the spacing between. So mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it it has messed up my. I don't know, saying certain <laughs> words a little bit, but not not quite. Like it, when I go back and get the permanents done, it'll be like just like regular. Before. What about when you eat? So are, when are, I when I eat, it's sensitive as it, dude. It, oh really? Yeah, because they were drilling bits of teeth out yeah, the yeah. whole time for like two hours. So you know, my face was sore as hell. I was gonna say probably feel like you've been punched in the mouth all day long, right? Yeah, it was yeah, all sure. swollen. Yeah. My upper lip and everything was like swollen, like for the first night. And then the Could you day, imagine if he had swollen lips and he had a lisp? <laughs> <laughs> Just making you, duck faces. Yes, if you would have came in today with swollen lips and a lisp, guys, <laughs> how you like? How you like the new do look? You, do you think yeah. he did good with my teeth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I look awesome, don't I? Yeah, yeah. So, but it, it finally, good. when it all, yeah, when it all kind of like, like the swelling went down, all that, I started do you looking feel, at myself and I was do like, you oh, sweet. Feel a difference, like. Um, I re I remember because I I had I yeah, you got to feel co more comfortable. I had a fucked up grill and I had a crooked smile forever, you know, because of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was a trip feeling my facial expression start to change now that I knew that I had good teeth. So when when you know your teeth are good, you start to even talk differently. And that, it's it's crazy, man. Like even just having like a resting face, you know, where like I used to just like keep my mouth super closed. Like I, I'll leave it kind of open because my teeth actually like hang down now like they're ground so far down that i like you couldn't even see them like it looked like i was all all, all gums yeah well don't lose know? the smolder i like the smolder you know what i mean what's the smolder this, you know, like, the yeah. serious face yeah, with yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got resting asshole face yeah, yeah. Like, you know, a lot of people yeah they're a little kidding. intimidated but yeah so i'm trying to lighten it up but yeah i am i am noticing that a lot like i'll i'll smile more i'll i'll be you know in a little better spirits just because of like it's like you're showing your teeth. It's weird. It changes your mood. Have you seen family and stuff yet? Yeah. Okay. So they've all seen. They've yeah. All so seen they're it. super stoked. And the thing is, what I love about what Tim did is, um, like it's it looks like my my teeth like I was born with. You know, it's not like I'm getting these Hollywood chompers. You know, like no, not, it looks totally natural. Yeah. You would never know if you did. Except didn't for know, the fangs, the fangs don't look natural. Well, Stupid. I had to add those. I, I was little, I got inspired by Black Panther. I was so. a little disappointed in the no platinum or no fucking diamonds in there. I was like, <laughs> come on, dude, you're already putting the that's real. Uh, that's know, not right? even style anymore, dude. Now it's rainbow, bro. That's the the what's that rainbow? rapper you showed me? Yeah. yeah, that rapper you showed me. Yeah, yeah, I saw six it. nine or what? Let's, let's, let's not count him. Yeah. No, let's not count him as like the the new trend or whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So I mean. I, overall, I'm I'm super pumped on what he did. Give your boy a plug, dude. He sound, he did a great job. What, yeah, what's his business? Dr. Tim Rao. So he's over in Holster, but yeah, he has just just look up his Instagram, uh, Tim the Dentist, and uh, and then you can check out all his work. Like he has lots of before and afters of like some people that had like way more gnarly looking teeth than me, and I was like, wow, man, mm -hmm. he just does he does masterful work, man. So. It's funny because uh, healthy teeth. Or, or is considered such an important thing for attractiveness. Yeah. Because in the past, for a long time, if you had bad teeth, that many times meant death. Like many times, it could mean that you didn't survive or you die. Like if you got a, if you had an infection in your mouth and you're, you know, five thousand years ago, you're fucked. You're yeah. probably not going to make it. Or if you lost your teeth. What are you going to eat? You yeah, know what I mean? You just got to gum everything. Yeah, everybody yeah. Have, your, your friends have to chew your food for you. <laughs> like a baby bird. Like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we consider it so attractive because it's like, that's that's a, a that's, I think if I'm not mistaken, anthropologists say that that was a major cause of death in ancient times or prehistoric times, not prehistoric, but ancient times where it was, it was teeth. Like if your teeth were able to stay healthy. Yeah. So very interesting. 
Um, Adam, I want to ask you about. I saw Katrina did the Sparta. Spartan race. Yeah, so I went up there to, to uh, talk, um, and I went and looked at the obstacles and stuff, and then I f- forgot she was going to do it, and then I saw her pictures on Instagram. So, yeah, I went- But was she healthy? Because she was, had a cold when she was- She wasn't, dude. She's still a little sick. Oh. You'll see her today. She's actually coming in here in a little bit to sit in the sauna, and she's taking the day off of work again. She's had She got the same thing you had. I mean, it's nasty. Oh, yeah. it's a nasty cold. Yeah, she's, she's normally rebounds really quick. So the fact that she she even ran in it, I thought she was crazy. But she, she did it to support her brother. Like, she's really been trying to get- her whole family, like, you know, together on this. They're all racing in Hawaii at the end of this year. A Spartan? Nice. Yes. Oh, the, wow. Uh, the big One of the big ones. And so this was That's just a, a what they it. call a sprint, which is like a shorter one. It's only five miles long. Um, but a couple, uh, I, I learned a lot of things uh, this time because the other times we've been down there, we kind of like spectated, we bullshitted, kind of whatever. This time I had to be there like I was racing because they were racing. Mm-hmm. So I had to get, get, get everything and wait. We were there super early, like six o'clock in the morning. I was there all afternoon and watched a bunch of other people race and then them take off. And then <clears throat> I tried to get some photos of them while they were going. I got some really cool photos of Katrina and her brother uh, while they were racing. But uh, notice a lot of a lot of things, right? So one of the things that I noticed, it's kind of funny to watch. Um, and I'm going to just jab right now, but I, I totally have a lot of respect for the the race and everything like that, is the 105-pound, um, pound, five foot five guy. Like it's the Spartan race is like – made for you oh yeah. yeah like it is ma- the more and, strength to weight ratio you have the better and period. i've you know like you walk so think of it this way so like when you're at like you go to like a bodybuilding convention all the big buff guys are like the guys you know what i'm saying that are walking around like chest, chest all puffed out because they're the shit because you're the big buff guy <laughs> yeah, those yeah. are the guys i can't do half right right no. at the spartan race <laughs> you're not gonna do well there's none of that you yeah. see this little little guy hopping around like yeah. little 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 rip dugs you know what i'm saying like yeah. little dugs like kind of skipping around and like shaking their arms out you know oh, kind of yeah. getting ready like this like yeah. <laughs> you know like dude like this is this is my game right here yeah. you know you can just see that you know eyeballing like the big dudes and shit yeah. so oh you're not gonna do well yeah yeah you see so it definitely it bodes well to be like a smaller framed lightweight guy that can run in these events so it's kind of cool to see that that um i don't know that it's different that's like nothing else that i can compare to or i've ever seen as far as like that that type mm-hmm. of athlete dominating yeah um and then i i they had i didn't realize how many obstacles they have for how short of a run it is. So I've done like Muddy Buddy. It's still gnarly. Yeah, so they do. So it's only five miles, right? But they had 21 obstacles. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of obstacles for only five miles. You think, I mean, you don't. You maybe put a one-mile stretch at one time, and then you're doing an obstacle. And the obstacles, for the most part, the ones that I watched out of the 21, I watched about, I don't know, 10 of them. I, I got to see Katrina and her brother go through them. Some of them are fucking challenging. And it's 30 burpees every time you don't finish. So there's 21 obstacles. You have potential of doing a fuck ton of burpees, dude. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that many burpees, oh, right? Man. So it's like 600 burpees. Yes. Who the fuck would want to do 600 that's, burpees that's, in a day? Like a whole day. That's a, I would never want to do that many burpees. Yeah, so fucked. you you definitely are motivated to do every obstacle. And there's some of them that are really, really challenging for, for people and when you first start the race, this is really mean too. This is I, I, I got a lot of laughter out of this. I'm fucking standing around injured watching everything. So I'm just kind of people watching. And before you start the race, they have this little like four foot wall. You you hop over the wall and you get into the, the race gate. You know, it's like the race gate where everyone feeds into this race gate. About a couple hundred people may at most fit in it. And then they take off from there. They do their whole like mm-hmm. their little speech and everything. And they, aru, 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 and, ah, and they go off and they run. Well, there's like this little wall that you got to climb over it. And I was watching a lot of people struggle the first <laughs> wall. Yeah. And all I could think was, fuck, you're doing a lot a long of, day. You're getting a lot of burpees ahead of you today. It's be a long <laughs> today. day of burpees. And they video it, dude. So it's like legit. There's judges and they're videoing the burpees. Mm-hmm. Like you got to do your burpees before you move on for the rest of the race. Watch some guys try and flip a tire. Probably the, the most challenging obstacle, bar none, was the tire flip for men. And I was a little surprised at that, but I guess really? it makes sense because again, this, that would be a big guy would probably do it that. It is right. right. It's a 400 pound tire that you got a tire flip two times and that's like a deadlift. And the guys that were kicking ass in this race, they weren't, you, you could tell they weren't like major yeah. deadlifters, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So right. seeing that it was pretty interesting to watch them like blaze through the first half and then they get to this, this portion where they flip the tire 
and then watching them get frustrated. Well, they must, yeah, they must like balance that out as far as skill. Like, so th- th- they take into account like somebody that's bigger. Like, let's give them something here where they're going to do well with this versus like always having climbing things to do. Right, right. now, yes. this is what I like about sport. I think they do a good job of that, right? Yeah. I mean, they had the Atlas Stone carry. So they got to carry. They had to carry an atlas stone back and forth and do burpees in between. I think they do a good job of trying to trying to make it. Yeah. Balance. Then you had to. Yeah. They had to do. You had to uh, pull, drag the sled with two. I think uh, fifty or hundred pound sandbags in it across the mud and back. Like there was definitely some some stuff that you had to do that required you to be strong too. You couldn't just be this wiry marathon runner because that's. I mean, when you look at it, five miles, and you're like, dude, if you're a really good marathon runner. Mm-hmm. You know, or even triathlete, right? You're going to blaze through this pretty quick compared to people, but they definitely do a, a handful of obstacles where it's a great environment too. Yeah, you know, well, that's another thing I really like about. It. I'm sitting here, you know, making fun of people and stuff like that. All out of good fun, but everybody is super supportive, dude. It's a great, very, environment. very supportive. Oh, yeah. It's a great community of people. Everybody having a lot of fun. There was people out dancing. Man, just blown away by how many people go to these things. I mean, I've watched it. In the They're last, only going to get bigger. Dude, the growth it, is exploding. In the huh? last three years, this thing has, just in our time of having Mind Pump, I remember the first one I was introduced to and seeing this one out in, the, in fucking nowhere, yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, just the line of cars coming in to go to these things and they're but, say so every 15 minutes, a group of like 100 to 300 people are taking off mm-hmm. from like seven a.m. all the way till noon. So do the math on that. Yeah. It's I'm, a it's a reaction. It's they're, they're going to keep getting bigger as and more popular as uh, our lives get more. Yes, and more to that and more note, that's yeah. a majority of what I saw. Now, mind you, they they have it sectioned off, right? So if you're a like a Ben Greenfield, if you're a pro, you take off, right. and if you're if you're competing to actually because top ten in each class. Uh, that that qualifies you for the next big race, right? If you want to get into it, <clears throat> and then you have like weekend warriors like Katrina and Larry, where they weren't trying to like hardcore compete. No. They're they're the majority though. You you can just see it. You just see groups of like computer nerds and stuff like that. That nope. That's that's that are, all. They're well, that's all, why it's so big. You yep. know, like where CrossFit blew up and everything. It's just like not that accessible for like everybody, right? Yes. Especially to compete uh, and, and even like make their way into the games portion of it. Whereas this is like. Everybody can compete. Obviously, there's an elite group that you know dominates the course that you pay attention to, but right. uh, you know everybody can give it a shot. And I'm not going to lie, there there's a part of me that after watching it firsthand and, and it literally mm-hmm. like running alongside Katrina and Larry and photoing them and stuff like that, that makes me want to just see me go at it. Like, yeah, because there's st- I'm looking at all the obstacles and I'm like, okay, 20 year old me blazes through this, no problem. Like none of these things. Like the, they did have a seven foot wall, which a lot of people had a hard time with, because mm. it's a seven foot wall full of mud and shit like that. Is not easy just to scale over. So there's a couple obstacles I looked at and thought, oh, okay, no, no, I might now fuck. do they help each other over? Like a- so you technically can't. <clears throat> so there's certain things they allow you to kind of help out and other things they want. For example, if you're a dude and you're trying to do the 400 tire flip, you can't, your boy can't come over and help deadlift it with you and get it flipped over. Mm-hmm. That's not okay. Like you got to do it. If you can't do it, then you go do your burpees. Yeah. But I did see them allowing people to help each other over some of these like seven foot walls yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I think that's encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, I think they do encourage you to, to do those types of obstacles, but then there's like the rings and obviously things like that you can't or dragging your sled. I couldn't come over and help pull the sled for you or carry the Atlas ball for you. Like those things, they require you to do it on your own. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll get out there one of these times. Well, you, the fact that it was broken up by that many obstacles already made it more. Cause I am not, you, you're just not going to get me to go do a marathon. No, I have, no, no. I have no, no, it's all endurance based. No, thanks. I have no desire yeah. to, and, and even if it's not a full marathon, a half marathon quarter, it doesn't matter. Like I have no desire to go run for five, 10, 15, or 20 miles straight. Just yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. That, and I get the people that love that no more power to you. But for me, it's just not appealing. I'm definitely more a strength guy, and so re- realizing that they have that many obstacles in that short of a race, that was more appealing to me. I'm like, oh, fuck, 21 obstacles in only in yeah. five miles. That means I'm probably never running more than a quarter mile. Yeah, no, this, just, is a, doing this is 100% a reaction to just modern, comfortable lifestyle. This is what I talked about when- I was going to ask you about how that went, like, because you spoke uh, yeah, for a lot of these guys. So they invited me to come do a talk uh, at the athlete dinner. So athlete dinner, the you know, the athletes can pay, and then they have special guests or whatever that come. And it's a, it's a group of, depending on the size of the show, so I think this is a smaller one or whatever, so there's like 100-something people in there. And they asked me to talk, and at first I thought to myself, like, what am I going to talk about? 
you know, am I going to talk about fitness and stuff? That doesn't really seem appropriate. So instead, I talked about, you know, the, the reasoning behind why obstacle course racing in Spartan in particular is so popular and the reason why people actually do it. And, um, you know, it definitely, I think it definitely resonated. And it, you can see that these races and this kind of activity is a complete reaction to the comfort of an ease of modern life. You know, I, it's, it's funny. Humans, we are wired to have to seek out challenge or at least to find meaning in life through challenge. And when challenge is taken away from us and taken away from us and taken away from us, it's almost like we have to create it. And we either create it by making ourselves anxious and stressed over trivial things or depressed over... You know how many people are depressed in, in modern Western societies or, or anxious and stressed out? More than ever. But they have we have way more than we've ever had before. Collectively, we have way more. Way, you know, more people have... A roof over the heads, food is not an issue. Right, you know, bums have cell phones now. Yeah, yeah. O- 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 obesity is more of an issue than, than starvation. Uh, people have more than one pair of you know pants to wear, one pair of shoes and one shirt. People have so many clothes that I know I know a lot of people have clothes in their closet they probably never even worn. And so it's like we we need that we need to feel that 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 challenge. And so that's kind of what I talked about. And I gave some examples. In my talk, and one of the things I talked about was uh, Superman, which I thought was very fascinating. I think I talked about this before on the show, mm-hmm. on how the comic book Superman, you know, when Superman was first, you know, uh, when they first came up with the idea of Superman, he was this alien with superpowers, could jump over buildings, run faster than a train, stop bullets. Basically, just the most awesome, you know, impenetrable with no flaws. superhero yeah, it was, ever. Yeah, was super Boy Scout, made yeah. all the right decisions, but then... As his powers grew through the years, he became like a god. Like he could go back in time if he flew fast enough. He could right. move planets, He'd spin around, and nobody bought the comic books. Like comic right. book sales dropped, and people would buy comics like Batman because Batman is a guy. Well, it's more who relatable. Could, yeah, he's dark. You know, he's got some challenges. His parents got killed, like all this other stuff, and so they had to make Superman more relatable. But in reality, what they're doing is it's highlighting that people. We need to feel like we're becoming something. It's not about being anywhere. It's not right. about being, at, you know, like, okay, I, I've accomplished everything. Now what? You know, we need to have that that challenge. And so I think races like this, like people who work in offices, people who have every day, you know, they have their kids, they have their jobs. Yeah. You know, it, 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 you, you need to feel like you're conquering something or at least that you're overcoming a challenge or you're feeling alive through a challenge. So what they do is they go, sign up for these races that test them and they get wet and they get muddy and they got to climb walls and they got and they feel and it's controlled but they feel the danger because people do get hurt at these things and then you talk to people afterwards or even before and after and they're just exhilarated they're just beaming yeah it's yeah. like it's like they feel like well you that know, was katrina's brother katrina brother is 40 years old He's in the IT tech world, you know what I'm saying? See? That's and he grinds 50 to 70 hours every single week. Right. And you know, was his younger in younger days was an athlete, you know, mm-hmm. played sports and stuff like that, an athletic guy and you know, is and I remember talking to him uh, afterwards. Man, he was so pumped. Yeah. You could just you could hear I can his- totally relate. I mean, I brought this up on the show when I did that that silly football game, you know. It was the same it was the same thing. Like I didn't prepare for it like very much. It, it just being at the event and knowing that there's like mm-hmm. extreme like danger and there's things that could happen that, you know, I could get hurt or, you know, I'm enduring like some pain, like momentarily in the moment, like it forces everything to be so present. And then after everything's done, it's like, whoa, you get this rush. Mm-hmm. It's this crazy rush you get from it. Right. But it's, it's hard just, to describe. But, and it's not like, I mean, can people get addicted to that rush or whatever? Sure. But is, is that a good feeling to, to encounter a challenge and to persevere, you don't even have to succeed or win. No, just the fact just that go all the way through it. Just the fact that you proved to yourself that I could do it. Yeah. Now think about this. Think about how parents parent their kids nowadays. That we remove all that from our kids. We take. We try as hard as we can as parents. Right. And I'm guilty. I was guilty of this. We try so hard to eliminate as many challenges as possible. Let's get get all the obstacles out of the way. Make it easy as possible. Kind of try to pave the smooth road for our kids so they have this easy road to success but the reality is if you make that life too easy for them the road that you're paving is not success right. the road that you're paving is you know this feeling of being either you you're know, not teaching them how to overcome no adversity. you're not doing any of that so yeah. for me per- so you you know I've been fasting now every month and I've been noticing the physical benefits of fasting but what I'm mostly uh, falling in love with is not the physical benefits of fasting it's the psychological yeah 100% mm-hmm. 
it's that it's that I know I'm about to not eat for three days. That's still a challenge for me. And when I do it at the end of it, I always feel like fuck. I don't. I can totally do it. Like I can totally go yeah. without food for a few days it's under right? my yeah. control. Yeah. Completely. This is why I think it's it, it it exists in all these all these cultures and religions. It's like these are challenges that we self impose on ourselves to give us meaning and to. I mean. That's how you forge. What is it? Steel is forged with with fire, right? I mean, you you, you got to have a little bit of that in order to feel like things are worth something. So that's kind of what I talked about, and it, and it resonated. I mean, in the beginning when I was giving the speech, everybody's eating dinner. And I think they were like, "I yeah. just want to eat, dude." Why are you talking? <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> but, but, but I think at the end, people were like, "Okay, yeah, fuck yeah." That's well. That's exactly I heard I heard your intro was shitty. I heard Taylor said that uh, Joe gave you a really shitty intro into you coming over. I went to give him crap about that. Oh, it was it wasn't that it wasn't that it was just short. It was just, hey, here's Sal, and I'll in- I intro myself, which I would prefer to do anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what it is? If you're, it, you know what it reminds me of? It's like, you ever seen like, uh, you ever go to a bar and there's like a comedian or something in the background, but everybody's just kind of hanging out. Oh, it's, yeah. So it's in the background. So I feel like people are eating and they're not really expecting someone to like yeah. talk. I've heard comedians complain that, you know, some of these clubs that have like, like food like that, like accessible because it yep. totally distracts yep, everybody. Yep. Yeah. No, it's just, you. it's just, initially it's like that, like getting everybody like, okay, now I'm talking. And, right. But then everybody- Capturing. Came, yeah. yeah, everybody got- Were everybody you the first speaker or was there people before you? He just said a little bit and then it was me and that was it. Oh, okay. Wow. I was the only one, yeah. Oh, wow. I was the only one talking. So anyway, wow. but yeah, it was, um, you know, I can see the value in these types of things because initially as a, as a trainer- and as a fitness professional, when I see these things, I'm kind of like, you know, why? Like, what's the purpose? Like, why are you doing so many better ways to get in shape or whatever? Right. But you really do see the value in 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 what it brings people, and it's not the physical value. The no. physical value is a side effect. I think it's the other yeah the other side of and it. And you, you know? bond with everybody else that's there, you know, going through the same thing. So it's there's definitely power in it, and it you know it's it's a great experience for a lot of people. So. How is the food? What they serve? It was it was good. It was just regular uh, steak and vegetables and and uh, potatoes and stuff like that. It was uh-huh. decent. Yeah, decent stuff. Good people. Very good people. Uh, you know, the Spartan team or staff, always very welcoming, nice yeah. uh, people. So I've always had a good experience with. Dude, them. I'll tell you what. It, it it has been a bit challenging eating though over the weekend for me. You know, after getting these teeth installed because it's just like so sore and. You doing shakes? Yeah. Soup. So so exact. So like I'm even just chewing on any like vegetables and chewing i was like trying to eat uh some broccoli and oh it was just like these lightning bolts that would hit so oh. i was like you know screw it i'm just gonna go with my green juice and like do that all weekend to save my ass because like I, I could only literally do so i did that and then i did some uh i actually did some weight protein too which i'm not like a huge weight protein you know mm-hmm. drinker but i'm like dude i gotta get in some calories man mm-hmm. so yeah i was like how long doing all shakes like all weekend how stuff. long will you be Peanut on the shake, shake diet i mean when are you supposed to start eating oh no it's it, it i think it it varies, you know, person to person. Like for me, I kind of tried, I tried to eat a little bit of meat. Like Courtney had made some Kahlua pork as well. And I was like gumming on that for like 20 <laughs> minutes, you know, <laughs> and it just wasn't working. So I'm like, I'm going to shakes, man. Fuck this. But yeah, but yeah I'm just starting to now kind of eat like softer meats and stuff. So, you know, I, but yeah, you have to eat it all in like the very back. So like, you know, these teeth in the back, I'm like grinding it down and that's about all I got. He's going to get all ripped. Yeah. He can't eat anymore. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Straight. Adam, you were saying how um, the, the, you're using probiotics. To oh help yeah. With, no, I just wanted to ask you. just reminded me. <clears throat> well, I wanted yeah. to ask your opinion on that because I, I, I don't, again, I don't know if I'm just uh, drawing the conclusion myself or there's, there's something there that, you know, I started getting in the habit of, cause we have Organifi everything, right? So we're, we're obviously we're sponsored by them. So I have my fucking kitchen cover looks like it so i have all their stuff in there and if probably the thing that i use the least is the probiotic and you know we had something a couple weeks back where you know my stomach was just kind of upset i'm like you know i'm gonna go take one of those and uh, i remember a few hours going by and going like oh shit i felt a lot better that's crazy so i've been kind of training myself if i eat off the diet or eat something i know is not ideal for my body um, I have, I just kind of, I, now I'm trying to like have it with it. And I've noticed that it doesn't, my stomach's not getting upset yep. when mm. that happens. Yep. Yep. Same, some stuff that would normally start to upset me after eating it. Uh, I feel really settled from mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the bifido bacterium and the acido, uh, I think the bifido and the acidophilus in there have been, are, are known to be able to help, uh, with digestion quite a bit. So I've done that too in the past where, when my gut was off, if I was going to eat something, 
then I would eat a probiotic with the food and it would make a huge difference. You could do that with uh, digestive enzymes will help a little bit too. Yeah, it's Five Guys Burger is near our house and it's like one of the go-to burger spots if Katrina and I decide like on a Friday night, let's let's have a burger or something. And so we'll do that. And the one thing I have to say that is the drawback of having the Five Guys is that, you know, it never fails afterwards. I'm just like, oh, I just feel like, like this, a brick. Yeah, like a brick or a rock is in my stomach. And just I, as good as it is going down, I just don't feel great afterwards. But since I've been using that, I, I feel totally different. Mm-hmm. So that's been kind of a cool little Now, the, the, the problem with that, and this is what I fell into, is I because of that, I started Abusing using it. it. Yeah, I started I, using them like, I got the cure. Yeah. But really what it's doing is it's it's helping, but it's not – like you're still getting some of the negative effects. You're just not getting as many. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So just I beware figured, of that. I figured that. Like I because I would do that, man. I was like, I'll eat whatever I want now. I'm just probiotic. Right, fucking. and I think that's important. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I would never want to give that impression. And then somebody on, in our audience like, oh shit, I'm gonna buy the product now and just fucking eat <laughs> shitty food all the time and just take it. Like, yeah. no, I'm not. I'm not. No, the way I'll do it is if I'm if I know I'm gonna go. Like if I make the conscious choice, like okay, you know what, I'm gonna go eat this whatever. I'll bring my probiotic with me and take that. Then it'll it'll help, but uh, otherwise it it's not like it's not a, a ticket to doing whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. I wish it was. Yeah, but it's not. No, that I'm not using it like that. I, I was pretty certain that's probably not an ideal way. Yeah. But it, it's nice to know that that makes a difference because it is something that you you know Katrina and I will occasionally have when we're craving a burger and it's so mm. close to home. And now I've kind of dude, real quick, I got I got to ask you guys, did you guys see what Elon Musk did? Oh, about, about Facebook, Facebook? Yeah. took himself yeah. off Facebook and space SpaceX. took SpaceX off Facebook and I think Tesla yeah. off Facebook. Yeah, whole oh. talking shit too, bro. Talking shit. Dude. Is this oh, so? People on Twitter were challenging him to do that, and he's like, "Oh yeah, well, I'll take that off." Facebook shares are, I mean, they're down. They've they've been up and down, but they're they're down right now because of all the stuff. And then there's a talk about. Um, how they might get investigated. There might be some regulations, which I think is just stupid. I know, don't regulate them. Don't it, it, that'll only make it worse. Do not inject any government into tech at all. Mm. This is like their opportunity to like to sink their teeth into oh, yeah. into tech. They're you know like, what I mean? Oh, finally. Oh yeah. Oh, We're we have an op- a big monster down, dude. Here's what they do: they never ever let bad news go to waste. If some shit goes down, for, drag yes, it through the mud. Because when people are scared, they're easy to manipulate. Yeah. So now people, especially the people who are scared the most right now, is are uh, is the liberal left, right? The the political left, because the story was that this political this company went in, mined a bunch of data from Facebook, and then used it to sway voters to vote for uh, Trump. And so now all the, you know, what they're trying to do is they're trying to use that political, you yeah. know, story to tell the left, hey, this is This, this is, is not how they good. got Trump elected. Yeah, and <laughs> here's, the, here's the, the truth. The truth is both sides have been doing that forever. Yeah. Like they spend a lot of fucking money on trying to, to, to sway people in psychological warfare and all that kind of stuff. So this is nothing new. But what they're trying to do is use the fear of Trump that the left has so much or the hatred or whatever to encourage them to push forward for regulations in tech, which is a terrible, terrible idea. Terrible idea. You let you let them jump in. The next thing you know, your Facebook will be a machine for propaganda, which it, it is a little bit through corporations, but it's always safer than having, you know, government force behind it. Type of deal, right? So don't let them in. But yeah, I think it's hilarious how Elon pulled his. Sh- See, that's the fine. I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, right, right. If if a, if a private company does, he's got personal shit with Mark Zuckerberg though. They, I do. They don't like each other. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's like that's a, funny. That's such like a like a billionaire jab. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I don't like you. You don't like me. Your I company's your company's struggling right now. Yeah. Let me give you a little kick while you're down. I love it. I love <laughs> it. He so. said like he still will use Instagram or something, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, yeah. he's he, they were talking shit on he's, Twitter. I saw that. Were they? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he was talking shit about him, but he was uh, Elon Musk was, but I didn't see anything with uh, Zuckerberg coming back at him. But speaking of old news, dude, I have something for you guys that's funny. When was the last time you guys heard a men's warehouse commercial? Oh, I guarantee shit. it. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. like the way you. You're look. gonna like yeah. the way you. Right, look. right. When was yeah. the last time you heard one of those yeah. commercials? Do you remember? I don't uh, know, man. How long ago was probably that? like the '90s. Or no, 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 no. They still run, bro. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been, been out of the loop. What's the guy's name? George Zimmer. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so George Zimmer is is the guy who, who does it. He's also the founder, right? Yeah. So he started it. A uh, little history on this. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is I'm in the hotel room this weekend. This is just how my brain works. I don't know if anybody else can relate to this or not. I think, Sal, you're like this. 
we're laying in the, we're laying in the hotel and we're like it's like fucking ten o'clock at night. And we're watching TV, and the the fucking men's warehouse commercial comes on. And Katrina and I aren't even really watching TV. We're kind of talking, but I I can hear it and see it. And I, of course, the men's men's warehouse commercial is so familiar to me because I've heard it five billion times. Right? Yeah. But what catches me is it's not him. Is he done? It's what? Not, it's not him. No. So this is why I said this is old news. He was actually fired in 2013. <laughs> What? Right. So oh, I remember reading face. about that. Right. I remember reading. I about kind that. of vaguely do too, but it didn't. It didn't sink in for me. And the yeah. reason why this is why it didn't sink in probably for you either. So of course, this is what I do whenever something like this happens, just because I'm curious. Right away, I get to Google and like, you know, who, you know, the men's warehouse guy. Figure out who his name is. Then I <laughs> research like, why is he not in the commercials? And I find out the whole story. So he, uh, first of all, he he started the thing uh, fucking forever ago. I think it's. I think the the company's almost forty years old yeah, or some 1970s. shit. Nineteen seventy, right? It, it's it, yeah, it's been around for early a, for a long time. He grew he grew it to over eleven hundred locations. Okay, Whoa. so yeah, bro, over eleven hundred locations. But here's the deal. So uh, it, what happens? He ended up getting a board. It, it turns into this huge company, very similar to Mark Mastroff story. Mm-hmm. Then he's like the chairman of the board. Then he's trying to tell them they want to do things, and they're like, "Nah, you're out. We don't need you anymore," and gets rid of them. But they've got they they've already got 500 hours of his commercial time. Oh, so so since 2013, running him right, all over. we've been hearing his voice still for a long time, even though he wasn't the voice of the company anymore because he's wow, no that must have pissed him off. And that was the <laughs> first himself. time, right? That was the first yeah. time it was con- it made the connection for me that oh, he's no longer. Oh, you'll guarantee it. You know, it's not him anymore. It's some other dude, and it sounded horrible. It didn't come off right. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that's a hell of old news for somebody who already yeah, knew <laughs> that, but it hadn't sunk in for me because I had seen these commercials. Him, still you isn't have that him? funny? Yeah, the local commercials just stick with you. I remember when, even when I was in Chicago, they have like this guy that he he does like commercials for like a carpet company, and it's been like the staple commercial like that's always on. But there's always something like that, and like you know, like local communities will have like somebody that just like is is like an icon. Yeah, I remember him from the men's warehouse. I remember the guy from the Diamond Center. The Diamond Center with guy. With the big yeah. ass mustache. Yes, yeah. dude. I remember uh Paul the, from the Diamond Center. Yeah, and then I remember Vidal Sassoon. If you don't look good, if, if, yeah, if you don't look good, I don't, we don't look good. Don't remember look that? Good. Those are the three dudes. What about the hair club for men guy? Wait, and it, it's like he was national. He was like syndicated. Yeah, yeah, no, but I just those other three guys. The dude with the, the diamond setter guy. Is just the diamond setter guy killed it. Fucking winner. He, he's, <laughs> he's he's a, a champion. He's a champion. Yeah, he Absolutely, he ladies Love man. We should have him on the show. Couldn't stand the guy. There's this this guy, this roofing guy that, that is, is <laughs> local. Knox Roofing, I think. But yeah, anyway, I had a bad experience. He just got a plug. I just yeah, no, I, I just blasted him. <laughs> he said he's, <laughs> yeah. he fucked up my yeah, roof. I got up. a hole in my roof. Yeah. <laughs> he never showed up, and I was trying to fix my neighbors. Like, did I tell you about this? story no. about what happened when no. I first moved into my house. No. Oh my God, dude. So I rented a truck, big old rental truck. And if you guys have ever been to my house, I know Adam has been to my house, but like you have to go down, um, like th- it's like a, not a through street. And so, uh, you, you drive down this really narrow, uh, road. And so like you, you wind through all these redwood trees and shit. And so there's this one corner, um, that I'm trying to drive this big ass truck through. Um, and it's really close to this, this other little extension of a house. Um, and so I'm like turning the corner and I hear a dunk and then it gets louder. And so I like try and back up and then I'm, I'm hitting it and scraping it even more. turns out I hit the like top of the roof. Oh shit! The roof was hanging over the road. When you first moved in, when I first was you moving in, you never told this story, dude. Yeah, I dude. would hate you as a neighbor. I hit this day dude's one house, <laughs> and he was in it. He Whoa. was in the extension of that. He gets out, and he's just like, he's like, ah, like just raging on me. And I was in there with my dad, and I'm like, whoa, 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 I'm so sorry. Like I, like I don't know. Like I was literally just turning the corner. I, like I had no idea your roof was like hanging over the road, you know. And there's no Justin, signs. All mad at him. What the fuck, bro? Your roof hanging over. No, the I was being like very apologetic. Your I'm roof like, hit I'm my so truck. sorry, man. Like <laughs> I, I, I had no truck. idea. Like, I was trying to be chill. And, like I'm like I'm actually I'm gonna be your neighbor. <laughs> and then it got really weird, you know. So I'm just like fuck. I gotta handle this. Are like, you guys I, friends now or no? Fuck no, no. We don't talk. Oh, Not dude, yeah. it's all your fault. It was fault. bad impression. And, Since day one. Yeah, but apparently the guy's a total dick anyway, so, you know, it's fine with me. Like, How I, I, like to, I like to weed him out quick. So <laughs> Yeah, so I, yeah, I totally messed this up. It was totally my fault. And um, so I'm trying to, to make up for it, and, I, and I'm calling people. I'm calling a plethora of these companies, and I'm like, please help. I'm in dire need of somebody to come fix this thing, like, ASAP. 
and you know, I, I presented a couple companies. He was like, he rejected two of two of the people. Like, I tried to get work on my house because he's like works for the city, so he's like super anal about like, you know, th- their Getting license the and all this shit. And I'm like, come on, guy! Like, I'm trying to help you out and pay for this and get it done. And uh, so he's just giving me a hard time the whole time. And he and he's like, I only want this company. And so he gets like the Knox Roofing people. And so I'm like, fine, whatever, let's go with them. So I'm I'm taking work off to make sure that I'm there to explain the situation and that it's it's actually my neighbor's house I'm fixing, not my house. And then you need to show up at this location this time. And so take work off, no show, no show uh, the whole day. I call, I'm like, what the hell? Like I gave him my phone number, everything, nothing. Fine, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you like a mulligan, right? And so we set up another date. This like same exact thing. I take work off. I'm like losing money out of this whole thing. Guess what? No show again. No call. None of that. And I and I like deliberately called the office and was like, "You better fucking call me if you know like you guys are gonna like have a problem finding the place or whatever. Like, make sure you call me. Like I'm taking work off. Of, no show. Ghosted me. Whatever. Three times. Yeah. So I wrote him a scathing review on fucking Yelp, and I'm like, dude, you can't like, you can't run a business like that. Like, come on. You had to go with a different company. Yeah. So I finally found a guy that was like he worked on a lot of the the local like. Uh, cabins like I live in kind of a community and so he does a lot of handiwork and stuff so I finally got him to help patch and fix it up and then he fixed it up and then it was like okay cool finally and then the, anyways it was this big big ordeal and it was super stressful and like I'm meanwhile I'm like remodeling my house and you know I had a newborn and I'm living with my parents and, I, and when I get off work I'm coming home and remodeling my house all by myself and it was like the most chaotic stressful fucking situation ever, he had so. no idea who he was messing with dude so ever since then i'm He's like so lucky you're dead you to me. him up <laughs> you're, dead to me. you're dead to me guy today's quad is being brought to you by chimera coffee it's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner calmer and more focused buzz without the crash Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking qua. The eagle has landed. Quee qua. All right, our first question is from Tony Lowe. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, it's our boy. Yo, yo. I'd like to hear Adam discuss how he's programming and planning nutrition for recovery. Oh. Um, as far as the nutrition piece right now, it's actually... Nothing I'm really too focused on yet. And that's just because I kind of You're trying to keep your weight the same, right? Yeah, I don't want I don't want to see my weight go up or down. So um I'm kind of subtly adjusting how I'm eating, but not really. Like not this is not how I work. Like so when I'm getting especially when I'm like rehabbing. So this is more about like my Achilles and getting that getting myself healed and mobility and getting strength back. And so just a personal strategy for me when, I, when I'm when i doing something like this, I don't have a show in time or anything like that. There's kind of like I start to take things in phases of what I'm like, what's, what are priorities? And so priority right now is the recovery of the Achilles and, and mobility. Hence is why every day there's some sort of, you know, uh, prime or prime pro um, that I'm addressing <clears throat> addressing with my posture. Uh, you see me doing the sauna. You see me doing the infrared. You see me doing uh, the ice bath right now. Or the um, yeah, Like a banded bu- planter dorsiflexion. That yes. Kind of stuff. Yes, yeah. exactly. You see me. You, I, I was just doing that next to you the other day, Justin, where I wrap a band around my foot. And I actually haven't even posted that. I do that too. Um, so really... It, you do that more as a trigger session, right? Throughout the day? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll just... And, you know, something that I, I, I'm noticing is just I've got... Uh, I definitely have this guard. This Achilles is different. It's different than anything else I've, I've dealt with. It's for sure um, one of the most challenging uh, injuries I've personally dealt with. I haven't done it a lot. Like, I'm not like a motocross fucking racer where I have 400 different injuries or broken bones. But I've had enough that, you know, this is... Uh, probably going to be the longest out of anything I've ever I've ever done like I I think in my head because I'm technically six weeks out from the injury like oh cool I should be recovered right now but no I mean when I was at the Spartan race I you know in the, from 7 7 a.m till about noon I'd already put 10,000 steps in well the most steps I've done since this injury three months ago is uh, about ten to twelve thousand steps. Like that's a that's a lot. And when I do that, like the, and that doing that much in that morning, walking out on dirt and so that. Oh, I was so inflamed. Oh, still. Oh yeah. 
I was inflamed and swollen and and hurt hurting and stuff. So now, how do you feel the day after or two days after doing something like that? Um, well, that would be today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm sore today. So you still feel it? Oh yeah, no, it's painful. Okay. Yeah, no, it's like like I said, it's, this is like nothing before. It, uh, yeah, because I'm wondering because I know with with injuries, what I've experienced is if you push it a little bit, it heals faster. But that's a hard. It's hard to figure out what that means. Well, and and again, you. you know, uh, this one is different than anything else I've done. Where you're you're right. There's a, a lot of injuries I've had before where. Getting in there, get the blood flowing, get the oxygen going, get nutrients sent there, start moving around, and it's a little painful through the moving around process, but then once it feels loosened up, it yeah. actually feels good. Uh, this one's a little different, and I just think that's because I didn't. I opted not to do the surgery. I still probably have some, and even when they were under there talking about my Achilles, I still had some damage in there around my ankle from previous injuries. So I think I just gotta have a. I have a lot of damage, and that is still there's still some of a, some of a healing process there. Um, so that's why this one. And so again, I'm moving really slow. When you look at my workouts, uh, because it's an injury thing, and the the feel and how I feel is so much more important than how I would program getting ready for a show or building muscle or trying to increase strength like because I care about my numbers or something so I really don't ride a workout out I actually go through the workout and kind of listen to my body as I'm going through and then I document it for everyone to see so what you're seeing on my insta story right now is not Adam in the lab like wrote out like the next 12 weeks and I'm like this is I'm gonna follow this to a T it's more like how do I feel today you know, I, these, there's certain areas that I want to uh, touch and address and my volume is pretty low. What you're, what, what I, why I'm tracking for everybody next month, you'll really see me start to, to, to move the screws is I'm tracking my total, uh, volume. And so you see me just adding the days up. So someone the other day, they DM me and they're like, you know, if you guys are all about maps and three days a week, why are you on day five? You know, and I'm like, well, that's day five since I've been back, asshole. Not like <laughs> five days a week. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I'm saying. Not to say that that we would say, got you slipping. Right. And there's programs that we yeah. we would encourage five, six days a week also. But that was so anyways, I'm I'm numbering everything so people can see. And then at the end of 30 days, I don't know how many workouts that's going to be. It could be 12, could be 10, could be about 15 or so. And then my goal is next week is to build upon that or next month is to build upon that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not putting this pressure of, you know, I got this, I'm writing this program out or I'm following maps red to a T it's like, no, I'm, I'm taking things from prime and prime pro. There's some staple things in maps anabolic, which is our foundational program. So of course it's going to be inside my programming right now, mm -hmm. but right now it's, it's about recovery for me, man. Are you able to, to, to squat heavy or is it limiting that? I mean, I, I've squatted up to 205. Do you feel like that's still limiting? The no, limit? I don't think that limits my squat. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I've, I'm I've, assuming a deadlift it would limit because of the posterior chain. I'm more scared to go heavy on that. Yeah. It, it hasn't. I've been I've been doing, I've incorporated single leg deadlifts in there. I've got single leg toe touch in there. So I'm challenging the ankle. So I'm definitely, I'm doing some barefoot work that I'm doing. I did conventional and I did um, uh, wide grip deadlifts or snatch grip deadlifts in there. But I haven't, I'm, I definitely wouldn't go really, really heavy on mm -hmm. because of post to your chain, like you're saying. You, you also took time off, period, uh, of training. Not everything. Just the, yeah, your upper body, everything. Yeah, so, yeah. So you're not just, I mean, you're rehabbing, but you're also just getting back into it right. at I the mean, same time. I mean, at that point, I finally just, I think I, and I don't know if I mentioned this on the show or not, I know we've talked about it, that I just, with everything that was going on with my body, hormonally, uh, it, with the testosterone being off of that for as long as I've been off of that now for the injury going on, I really was like, okay, I'm not going to dwell on my, my, my physical me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to dwell on my physique and care about that stuff. Like I'm going to put energy and effort into personal growth. You did a workout growth. fast. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and I, and I know that how fast I can get it back. You know, I guess the takeaway from that for some people, I mean, it literally is a workout fast because right. and it's important that we communicate that because people might confuse that with because it's different than somebody just saying fuck it I don't want to work out anymore. right or falling off the wagon right? it's very different you're you're, you're listening to a, a you know a person who's been in fitness professionally for 15 years and been active for most of his life so it wasn't and I know this it wasn't you saying fuck it I don't want to do any more fitness it was you literally saying I need to fast from fitness because in that state uh, you know and maybe correct me if I'm wrong that is a very difficult state to go through when 
you know, whether you like it or not, it, it, there there was some, at least some identification with being fit and being able to move and being of active. Of course, right? Of course. So fasting from that, you know, was more about treating your psyche than anything. It was, and and that's kind of, it, it, that's kind of how I took the challenge on. So instead of like fighting my body and being angry every time I went to the gym and then I felt in pain, it's like detach, or, right? Just detach. Like I'm going to let go of that part of me. Like I'm going to let go of that. I you know I can always get it back whenever I want to. Um, and so I just kind of embraced this, like, okay, I'm not going to lift right now. I'm not going to train. I'm not going to worry about my physique going to shit. I'm not going to worry about my arms getting all skinny, starting to get kind of a belly. Like I just said, you know what? Like, I'm not going to really worry about that. Now I also didn't go off the rails and just say, fuck everything and just eat like shit. That's the difference. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, because so- I would have been royally fucked. Like I put on some serious body fat for me j- by being mindful. Just, like, yeah. I mean, I was down to eating once twice a day at the most, I had to cut my calories in half because I'm just not moving. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm yeah. telling you guys right now, like a 10,000 step day is a big deal for me. A 10,000 step day would be a sedentary day for me just three months ago. No, you have to imagine, if you're listening right now, you have to imagine, you know, if we're, we're fitness professionals. We've been doing this for a long time. There is a level of identification with the physical, of course. Every, first of all, it's everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got, a, uh, got some kind of attachment to their body. If you were to lose a limb or not be able to move for a while... You, it would be very challenging just because you have some attachment to your ability to move, but you, you know, multiply that times you know ten with someone who's in fitness who now has lost the ability to have a quote unquote good feeling workout because you know hormones are off, and then on top of it, you can't move uh, your lower body at all. So you're now you're limited even more. So removing yourself from that wasn't, and I know this, I was watched you. It wasn't you saying, I give up on life. I'm just going to fucking be lazy. It was literally, I'm going to detach because this is fucking with me. And this is how I'm going to get through this. And so it's important we communicate that because I'm pretty sure there's people listening right now who are going through something similar or may go through something similar. And sometimes that's the answer. Now, the side effect of that being, of course, you lose your fitness, you're not able to work out and all that stuff. But life is all about looking at like your, your options and sacrifice. And at that moment it was, okay, you know, my body, I'm going to have to sacrifice it for a second to, to strengthen and, and create more of a healthy psyche. Otherwise, what's the other option? Fuck man, massive depression or, you know, anxiety or whatever. Right. right. You know? And I even, I, there was a little bit that at the very beginning that I kind of struggled with that because I thought, okay, well I can still do all my upper body stuff. So better yeah. me do that than nothing. And I just, I felt myself really challenged. When you look at my physique for me personally, my, I spent the first 10 years of my workout career focusing on my upper body. So honestly, it's the least thing I need to worry about. It was, it's the last 10 years of my lifting. I've really started to build my lower half. So if there's anything that is lagging or needs the most attention, it's my, my lower physique, which I can no longer move. So the kind of, I started like, I started fucking with myself where I just get like, well, fuck, what am I, I'm sitting here lifting my upper body. It's like, why? Just so I can feel my shirts out. Like, why am I doing it? Why am I so, why do I care so much that I need to keep pressing through right now? I fucking hurt right now. I'm in pain. I don't feel like doing this. It's like, no, nah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna shift my focus instead of hanging on to a certain way that I look or trialing as trying as hard as I can to try and make. T- no, I'm gonna be mindful. I'm gonna cut back on some of the calories. I'm gonna make a little bit better choices. I'm not gonna allow myself to go off the deep end and stuff like that. I can't fucking move, and I'm gonna put my energy and focus towards other things that aren't hindered by that. Like. I don't need an Achilles to sit down and read a book. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't need an Achilles to connect with my sister or my brother and give them a call and talk to them for an hour on the phone. Things that I probably wasn't, I wasn't doing enough of as it was in my life. So I chose to fast from that. That's a great way to put it. So I didn't think of it that way as saying it as a fast, but it absolutely was a, a workout fast for me. And the same way that I reintroduce uh, food into my diet after a, a long period of fasting, you see me doing with exercise. There is not like this, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to do this, sure. whatever. It's like, okay, I'm going to start really easy. Very, I mean, two sets of exercises, one muscle group I'm touching, you know what I'm saying? Very lightweight for me. I'm nowhere near going to failure. It's like I'm just touching these weights, and then I'm kind of assessing how I feel afterwards. Oh, shit, like that little bit actually fucking got me sore. Wow, hmm. I'm that deconditioned right now. So I don't need to be in here training every single day. Now, when, now that you've been lifting, have you noticed the changes? You've been saying your testosterone, you can feel it more than anything. Yeah, yeah, that's the the biggest thing I notice uh, right now. And I and I, you know, I've got great things to say about the Juve Light. I've got great things to say about the sunlight saunas. Um, I've definitely that those things have helped me in in multiple ways uh, that I that I appreciate. But nothing 
has made a bigger difference than than the strength training has mm-hmm. for like my my testosterone levels, my sex drive. Like that's just it's crazy, right? It, it was crazy. So think about it this way: think about what a gift you've been given. And I know it's been challenging, so I hate to I, I say it that way, cause I, <laughs> and I'm not being insensitive to what you've gone through. But think about the gift you've been given now feeling it firsthand so recently uh, just how big of an impact resistance training can make on those good feeling anabolic hormones for when we communicate this to people you know it's crazy it's it's so crazy and it's so funny even myself because you know i'm taking all these herbal supplements i'm doing all these other things to to help boost it too and you know, it never fails. Like, and we talk about it on the show all the time, but until you feel it, like a dramatic difference like that, you know, and, and I know a lot of like probably mid, mid 20 people that are listening to this, that they, they just, they don't give a fuck and they can't connect to that yet. And like, I understand, but at one point you'll be 30, at one point you'll be 40, at one point you'll be 50. And at one point you will feel your hormones. If you're a natural person, start to decline. And in it, as a man, uh, and of course I'm going through the extreme version. So you can kind of hear like for me, like, Oh shit. Like I don't ever want to feel that. Well, I mean, I, I battled with depression over it. I didn't, I had no motivation to want to come and lift. I have no sex drive and all those fucking things are all compounding. Yeah. So you, you put them all in together and it's just you like, eliminate one it's going to like uh, affect everything else. Oh, it's a domino effect. And it, it's especially like, if you're, if you're used to being like, yeah, sexual alpha, strong dude, not that that was your identity, but to an ex- to a to an extent, if you live that way for a while, and then that's taken from you, you're like, ah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's I, a challenge. I definitely think that I'm a little bit of an extreme version because of what you just said right there. But it, it made me really connect to all the male clients that I've ever trained in their 40s and 50s, and and are struggling to get to the gym and just work out and keep that like consistency going. Mm-hmm. Like for me, your life, the blessing or the silver lining in all this is that you know there'll come a time when I'm 50. I know. For sure, where I'm like, you know, busy. Maybe we have another company or business or things that we have on our plate. And, you know, I don't care about the my physique as much as I used to. And that was a major motivator for me through my young adulthood. So, you know, I could totally see that there'll come a time where, you know, I potentially could be off the wagon or not being consistent for a while. And this will serve as an incredible lesson and reminder yeah. for myself as I age that nothing has made me feel better. And it, it was very, very hard to get this momentum going. I mean, I'm really only on about two weeks and I'm finally like feeling, and I feel it. You in look my, different. Oh, I, I feel, I, I know. Your energy is different. Right. I can feel completely. it in my energy. I can feel it in the way I communicate and I talk to people my motivation throughout yeah. the day. And so I can feel, you know, and I know we, I trailed off for you, Tony, on like, what am I exactly doing? But the honest to God truth is I don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Like every day I go into it, I'm trying to listen to my body. Now, there are certain things that I do know. Some One thing is that I'm trying not to overdo it. That's a big mistake that I think a lot of people make. I, I've made it in the past with an injury. So I'm, I'm weighing on the less is more right now it doesn't take much to get your body to change no that's the thing like it, it, this is one the thing that i love most about getting older this is actually why i embrace getting older no joke like i look forward to turning 40 i look forward to turning 50 because the wisdom that comes with it and the wisdom really is just experience and learning from experience so there's definitely older people that aren't wise because they don't choose they choose not to learn from experience but if you pay attention and you, you go through, you're going to go through challenges because that's how life is. There's going to be a bunch of shit that's going to challenge you. And you learn from it. You become wiser and wiser to the point now where I know this is, this is, this is what I find very interesting. Now when I'm in a tough situation, when I'm in a very challenging situation, as hard as it is, I know at the end of it, I'm going to be better. So now when I have a challenging situation, part of me is like, ah, this is terrible. But there's another part of me that's like, I can't wait to see what the other side is if this is going to look like because I know I'm going to come out of it and learn from it. Right. So it's 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 knowing that that cycle and that sequence. So that's the thing about it, you know. No, when we were I was going through this and sharing with a buddy, and he's like, "Man, it's so crazy your attitude with this that you're not like poor me or you're not, you know." Oh, if this was you know 19 year old you or 20 year old you, right? Maybe. And, and and what I've told him is just along the lines of what you're saying right now is what I've had enough of adversity in my life growing up that. You know, what I started to realize after you'd done it enough times is, wow, the shittier it is and the more challenging it is, you know, as hard as this is to say and, and think about, 
the fucking better it, it becomes. Like it, on the other side of that yeah. fear and on the other side of this this hardship or whatever it is I'm going through, the harder it is, the more rewarding it is yeah, on the other side. Something always emerges that you didn't expect that's even more, you know, uh, powerful. It's yeah. Something that you didn't like even foresee this. So the shittier it gets, I mean, yeah. that, and that's my, my takeaway with it. And when I try and try and remind people, and I know it's mentally tough to do that, but- Man, if the darker it is, the harder it is, the lighter it becomes, the better it is on the other side when you break through. It's the phoenix. You guys ever see a picture of phoenix or hear the story of the phoenix? Yep. The bird that gets consumed by flames and then emerges. Right. I actually sent that to my sister when she was going through a divorce, and now she's going to get a phoenix tattoo, so my parents are mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Now you've done it. Yep. Next question is from Tristan Anticall. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen someone do in a gym? Oh, shit. God, I've weirdest. Seen some, oh, did you guys see so. someone? Did you guys get tagged on this? Someone tagged me. They took a clip. Uh, maybe it was a DM we got um, of the guy spreading his cheeks and fucking drying his his ass crack. <laughs> yeah, I in, saw the, in the hand dryer. Yes, because you know, we talked about that a long time ago. You know what's funny is I would like to say that's weird, but no, I see it so often. Time. No, no, that's not the weirdest. So often. Yeah, yeah. That is literally... But like his ass cheeks? like Dude, like bent you've never there. seen that? Yeah, I have. I mean, I just yeah. like, I can't believe that that <laughs> I have seen that. Well, I, I have two that come to mind that are that are for sure. Definitely the ball drying. Yeah. yeah that, that happens all That's the time. That's always. Yeah. I mean, literally every single time that I go in the locker room, yeah. there was a dude drying No, I'm with you, Sal. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's weird, but it's so common that it's not that weird for us, right? right? Like, I w if I walked in and I saw a guy do that, I'd just kind of shake my head. I wouldn't, it wouldn't even be... But I'd be like, oh, it's Tuesday. I, I, yeah. I had a couple things that happened that where I was like, appalled by because I was like, no one's done this. This is weird, right? And the first one that I'll share was this, I don't know, she was probably between three and three and 400 pound uh, uh, heavy set lady, right? And she had her headphones on and she was in our machine area and she was just fucking dancing. I mean, like between sets and she was just flailing her arms around and like singing out loud and just... Which that's not that weird. We've yeah, you know, I mean, into it. We've seen that, but this has now caught the attention of all management, right? So we're watching her, and uh, sh she just looks a little too much into the music, like she's out of it, like she's just not really paying attention to anyone who's near because she's kind of flailing her arms. And some I see some people kind of duck out of the way; they almost get hit and shit. I'm like, <laughs> so we're kind of keeping a close eye on her. And then she starts using all the equipment, just like not how it was supposed to be, like just <laughs> weird, like sitting in machines all backwards and different and upside down and. The final straw for us where I had to come over and finally tell her you can't do that. So remember, this girl's fucking three, four hundred pounds, right? There is a chest press machine that is facing the mirror. So you can see yourself chest pressing. And it's only about three feet, four feet away from the mirror. And she props her hands up on the chest press, but she's facing it reverse. And she starts walking her feet up the mirror. <laughs> so she's using what? she's using using the the machine to leverage with her arms, wow. and she's walking she's back walking her feet up against my mirror, and I'm thinking like this can't be fucking good when, right here. When is it ever a good idea to walk on a mirror? Right. So I go over and I tell her, I said, "Ma'am, could you please not put your feet up on the mirror?" <laughs> you know, say the first time I ever said that. So that was weird, right? Yeah. But it gets weirder. So I, I kind of tell her that she was polite and everything, but I could tell she was fucking on one. She was on something, and she was kind of uh -huh. out of it. So I walk away, kind of like leave her alone, but we're keeping a close eye on her. She's not hurting anybody yet. She's not breaking anything yet. And then she makes her way into the, the wet area. Now I can't really see her, so I got to kind of follow her there, go see what's going on. And she gets into the fucking jacuzzi, just starts taking off her clothes, <laughs> just getting fucking naked in the jacuzzi. <laughs> totally naked. Well, dude, wow. starts stripping. Oh, she's, by the time I see her, she's down to her sports bra and panties. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't, <laughs> you can't do that. And she's like, ah. She's just, just ignoring me. Like She's looking through me. And so I, I get the other management together. I'm like, I, I don't know if I could physically take this woman out, like carry her out of the gym right now. And she's in the jacuzzi right now getting naked. Like, I don't know what the fuck to do. So we're like, I don't know. So we call, we call, I don't remember who we call first, but eventually it leads to the fire fire department coming down because we're like we're pretty sure she's on drugs like she doesn't look sober and so the fire department rolls up you know the whole squad comes out and there there's imagine like four firefighters standing outside the jacuzzi and she's still in it she won't she refuses to get out of it you know and she's just in a sports like, bra we're gonna give the jaws a life and yeah. panties and the guys are like ma'am could you please step out and every time they tell her to step out and they they kind of reach like they're trying to reach for her like that she ooh, she dunks under the water she dunks <laughs> oh under, she dunks under the water and she like holds her breath for a few seconds and she comes back up ah, and she opens up the guys are like come on ma'am you gotta kill 
She gets under the water again. She's <laughs> and so they're kind of playing this game until finally one of the guys is like, dude, we gotta get this lady out of here. Like they they finally get it that there's something wrong with her. So yeah. Two guys get in the pool oh and like God. escort her out, and then they they lay her down, they strap her down into a fucking like, you know what you might call it, you gurney know, or yeah, whatever. gurney or whatever, yeah. and roll her out of there and stuff. But uh, wow, yeah, what I, was it, she on? Did they know? Uh, I some sort of methamphetamine. I don't yeah. know what what it was. It's good times, but we, yeah. I mean, they were they She's saw her it. eye, they saw her eyes, her behavior and stuff like that. And I was like, she, and he's like, yeah, yeah, for, for some sort of methamphetamine. We'll find uh, out when we get there. But I, I had I had to figure out how to kick somebody because we we you know when you manage a gym, you call you call the cops or the fire department. I don't know twice a month probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, pretty it's, 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 real. yeah, all the time, right? But I had a guy, so somebody came to me. I met this at the Sunnyvale Club. So you, I, I don't, uh, I know they remodeled it, but the way it used to be, maybe it's different uh, now, but when you walk in, there's the front desk to the right, and then straight ahead, there's glass, and then there's the pool area. And you can actually go through there, or you can go through the locker room. So I'm at the front desk, and someone in their bathing suit walks through the door through the pool area, and they're like, there's a guy in the sauna, and he's threatening people. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I'm like, all right. So I got to go in there. So I walk over and I'm walking over to the sauna and, I, and you can see through the, the glass, right? Because it's got a glass door. And there's this big fucker in there, old biker dude looking, right? He's got tattoos, big old beard. And he's in there by himself and he's just staring at me through the glass. And as I'm walking towards him, he pulls his shorts down and just starts taking a piss. <laughs> no joke, straight into the, like the glass. What? Yeah, so I'm like, like full frontal uh, view on you. He just pulled it down enough like, to let out, but he's doing it at uh, me. No, no, he sees me. He's there. He's yeah. almost like, come yeah. get me, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's he just kind of pulls it out and just. And I'm like, and so I look at him like, what the? He's fuck? marking his territory, man. Yeah, I'm like, what the yeah. fuck are you doing? So I'm like, and so I'm thinking in my head like, what do I do? So I let him finish. Yeah. And then I open the door. I'm like, you need to leave now. And so he comes out and he's like, I'll kick your ass. I'll fight you. So I'm thinking in my head like, ah, oh, I got to fight a big sweaty biker <laughs> near the pool on the tile. Like someone's going to slip and I don't want to. This fight. is going to go well. Yeah. So I'm in my head. I'm trying to think. Neck. Yeah. I'm trying to think like, do I go call my trainers to come help me? Do I call the cops? Like, what do I do? There's others members watching. So I have this like brilliant plan. So he's like, I'll fucking fight you right now. I said, you think you're tough? I said, come with me outside. We'll fucking fight outside. Let's see who's really tough. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, follow me. So I walk out the pool area and then I walk up to the front door that leads to the outside and I open the door. Lock it. I open the door for him and I go, after you. So he walks outside, I close it and I lock it. I wave at him and I call the police. <laughs> yeah. Get, get down. I'll see you later. Epic way to he handle He was so angry. Epic yeah. way to handle Oh, that, he's dude. like standing out there in his bathing suit all wet and shit. You have your moments of brilliance. That's <laughs> that, one of that them is, for sure. That's that the way was, to do it. That yeah. was one yeah. of my favorites. I had a guy one time that was, this was his Persian cap and an older dude, probably in his 50s or so. And he's in the jacuzzi. So this is the same jacuzzi that the chick is trying to, you know, drown herself in or whatever. And he's in there by himself, and I get a complaint, right? So that's normally how it happens, too, at the gym. Somebody else, like somebody other person, somebody else in the gym realizes how fucking weird it is, and they come looking for management, right? right. So I got someone comes to me like, yeah, could you come talk to this guy? He's uh, he's shaving in the jacuzzi. Yeah, I was going to say, not to be stereotypical, but <laughs> was there hair involved? Dude, yes. yes. And, it, and of course, it's the Persian guy who's got lots of hair, <laughs> fucking, right? So I come walking in, and this dude's got a fucking Mach 3, and he is just yes. he is just shaving his face and rinsing it off in the jacuzzi no, while he's no, no, sitting no, no, in the jacuzzi. No. Yeah. And I'm like, I, part of me just watched him for a while because I just really thought that I got to see this dude is just thinks this is totally normal. Like and this okay. is his house. Yeah. Walk over and said, hey, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> You can't just <laughs> shave in the pool like that. Yeah. Where do you think it goes? You know, and you know what I love is these people always do this. Well, where does it say I can't do that? Yeah. I'm like, oh, great. I got to play oh, this game with you. God. Like, I got to go get the contract out that you signed that has a million things in the back. Like, <laughs> don't make me do that. Oh, my God. I had a thing with that. I, I didn't know, like, if we had a dress code or not, but I just knew that this dude was making everybody uncomfortable with his decision with this, like, really small Speedo. Oh, I remember this guy. Yeah. And so he was like, I don't know if he just came out of the pool or if he just, like, was wearing a Speedo yeah, in, like, see a the, shirt. You could see the vein. You could see, like, <laughs> yeah, just shaft and, like, I mean, it wasn't, like, impressive or nothing. It was just, like, you know, like the, it totally molded like his twig and berries, and it was like he would he would do curls right next to the mirror, 
And so he's doing curls as he's doing the curls. What made it uncomfortable was, you know, he had this sort of he compensation where he's hip thrusting yes. oh. right towards the mirror. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was just like, I, I finally I had enough. And I'm just like, dude, like, I'm sorry, man, but you got to put some shorts on, like like legit <laughs> shorts. Like, and these do curls, right? These are not going to work. Yeah. And I was like, this is just not like, you can't wear this. And he's just like, whoa, what are you like? I, I'm wearing. You know, I'm wearing this to work out. Like, this is what I would, what I do. I'm like, well, you need to wear shorts. You need something to cover up, like, the situation right here. I was like, it's very <laughs> revealing. Go put some clothes on. Uh, he got so mad, and he was, like, trying to fight me about it. I, 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 if someone's listening, if you're listening, and you are a, you know, trainer who works in a big box <laughs> gym, um, here's, a, here's something for you to do that I wish I would have done. If you're there, and you're starting, or you've been there for a while, start to journal this stuff, because... I have forgotten more I than I than I've ever experienced because, and I could sit here and tell these stories all day long of people doing some weird, just wacky, fucking shit. shit. Like those are just the first two that popped in my mind because I think I've shared those before on here a long, long time ago. But I mean, I've seen dudes do weird stuff. I mean, seen guys people that are just sweaty, like they know they're sweaty, so they they preventatively put towels like this border around. Uh, you know, the treadmill. And I just remember watching this guy run and literally like, it was like showers of sweat would just <laughs> just come off this guy. Is this the guy that puts the towels on the sides? Yeah. The, I know him. Yeah. Hillsdale guy. Everybody saw him. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was like, he'd go crazy on the Stairmaster like, or whatever. Ew, like, yeah. can you do something else? You know, <laughs> like this is just unsanitary, bro. <laughs> like, come on, guy. It just smells. Yeah. Does it smell real bad? It smelled real oh, bad. I know. Be, I know that guy. Did I, you guys did, ever, did you guys ever see Beast? Yes, Beast was always there, You're like loading the 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 fucking leg press, like with and, every weight and in the gym. Like one inch. Yeah, and yeah, who gives a shit? And he just ah, peacock. They call everywhere. him Beast because he wears a weight belt. This is an old fat guy, by the way. Yeah. Wears a weight belt that says Beast on the back. <laughs> and then he would do yeah, yeah. every machine, the full stack, and he would move it a quarter of an inch. That's it. So whenever he would walk in the gym, because yeah. I was notorious for getting, he on, thought he was a badass. He was, too. Yeah. yeah. Whenever he'd walk in the gym, I was notorious for getting on the intercom, and I'd be real low under my voice, just so my staff could hear. I'd go, Beast, real loud <laughs> <laughs> on the intercom, so the music Beast. would stop. With, Beast, Beast, <laughs> yeah, Beast is here. Beast is at it again. Next question is from Thayer2513. What is the greatest life lesson each of you have taken from each other? Uh, wow. Whoa. That's a pow- that's a powerful <laughs> statement. <laughs> the life gr- lesson? The greatest life lesson. Ooh. I can tell you right away that- Doing some life. Um, no doubt. I will actually probably even go back and listen to some because I, I know that there's a lot that I have probably forgotten. But the advice and the information I think that and this is why I always try and push you guys in this direction uh, about parenting, um, both Sal and Justin here. Uh, Sal, Sal more here, and then I'll give something for Justin that I, I always try and remind myself. So both of them have their unique, they're unique as far as the information they've provided uh, as far as parenting and being a father. Um, Sal has really unpacked uh, some you know critical conversations. I think that you will have with a son or a daughter at one point in your life that I think are are tantamount to how you handle it. I think it's so important how you 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 know convey certain messages when it comes to like nutrition and working hard and you know playing sports and bullying and like there's all these things that these kids are inundated with at, at that point in their life and I feel like so many parents kind of just glaze over it like they just or they don't know. They don't know how to say it or they think they're handling it right and they don't really realize what they're starting to do to that kid by by saying some of these things. Like they they don't realize they're putting their insecurities and their fucking issues now on this child at 5, 6, 7 years old. And so there's been a lot of things that, you know, Sal has shared on this podcast that has made me stop and think like, "Wow, man, I'm so glad I'm not a parent yet because you know, that hadn't really crossed my mind and I'm not sure what I would have said in that scenario, but I feel now that I have tools that I didn't have before that I think are extremely valuable. And I hope that people that listen to this, that take from it, and it's why I always push the guys in that direction. Now that's kind of Sal, like that's been a, a huge takeaway for me. And there's, and granted, all these guys are fucking brilliant in many ways. And so there's lots of you know, life lessons and business lessons and communication lessons that we've probably all given to each other outside of even what you guys have heard on the podcast. So every day is growth, I think, for all of us in a sense. 
But that has been a big one uh, with Sal for me that I, I've taken a lot, not just one or two things. There's been a lot of things where I've went, wow, that's fucking really, really solid information. And then with Justin, something that I still have to remind myself, and he's such a good reminder for this, is I pride myself on being somebody, one, you can't put me in a box. Two, tell me I can't do it. It's challenging. I'm going to fucking do it. You know, I, I put myself in uncomfortable situations. But to think that we've built this built this huge podcast um, with Justin doing something that he absolutely, if you were to have asked him on his own five years ago, would you like to do this? He'd be like, fuck no. I don't want anything <laughs> to do with that. Like, I don't want to be on a YouTube channel. I don't want to be on a podcast. So the fact it's that he, he, he does this day in and day out with us, um, to me, like that is such a, it's such a great lesson for myself when I think, oh, I'm doing something that made me uncomfortable for a day, you know, or for an hour, you know, or something that I don't really want to do. It's like, dude, my boy comes to work every day and lives a life of something that he probably would have never done had he not put himself. Now, I, maybe it's different now for him, but for me, that has been a, a constant lesson and reminder for me that I've, I've taken from him. So those are the first two that come to mind for both of them. Mm. Yeah, I'll go, dude. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, I think for me, just from you guys, I mean, I've picked up quite a bit. Like, I think um, obviously the communication piece and, and just like Adam was mentioning, me just being uncomfortable with the whole process of it and really just kind of modeling a lot about uh, how you guys communicate and articulate your points and, um, you know, throw it out there um, and being confident behind it. And I think that, you know, just starting with Sal, I think – one of the biggest things that I've um, I've tried really hard to emulate into um, sort of shadow is just the, the delivery and, and the assertiveness behind some of um, you know his opinions and thought process. Um, just because I'm sort of the opposite in that I like to really critically analyze. Um, and I overanalyze a lot of times what I'm trying to convey, and so. It, a lot of times when you go to communicate that and verbalize it, it's just, you, you just get stuck and you get frozen and, and you, you start really like living in your head and while everybody else is kind of waiting uh, on the other end of it for you to deliver it and it just becomes awkward and kind of clunky. And so that's always been something that I've kind of noticed I do. And I, and um, it's, it's nice having, you know, both of you guys are really good at this, but uh, you know, just having, having that, um, delivery and just the way that, um, I can, I can every day I can come in and sharpen up my skills just by, you know, being right next to you guys and being, you know, approximately next to you. So, um, and then, you know, as far as Adam is concerned, you know, the same thing as far as communication, but really more so in how he, he deals with, um, follow-ups and how he really, like he just does such a masterful job at, at always keeping contact with people and, and keeping people close to us and really letting them know, um, you know, that, uh, they're important. And, um, that's something that I, I recognize that really early. And that's something that drew me to Adam and to do business with him because, um, you know, there's, there's, there's part of that retention where it's cool that if you're in front of me, we have great rapport. And, you know, I'm good about scheduling it and being forward, but to kind of go back and, and touch people that I, I used to communicate with is, is something that I'm terrible at. And, and, and Adam just has that mind where he'll go back and, and, you know, make sure that a lot of people, um, you know, they hear from, from him and from us as, as, as a company and a group. So I mm. think those two things are big. Yeah. For me, I think, uh, you know, with, Justin just doesn't complain ever. He never complains about anything. That doesn't mean he doesn't like something. He tends to do something about whatever he doesn't like. And not that I felt like I was a big complainer before, but I definitely feel like uh, I could get stuck in a, a space and feel maybe negative about something, whereas Justin tends to just act. He moves forward. Um, and so I, I've never worked with anybody who literally doesn't, who takes that on so easily or at least so readily uh, as Justin does. So I really uh, appreciate watching that, um, especially because when we first started the show, I was going through some very, very difficult times. And, you know, Justin's had lots of challenges as well. He doesn't even talk a lot about his challenges. And it's not – part of it is, yeah, you're not a, you know, you're not a big uh, sharer of things. But the other part of it is you just don't complain about shit. I think you, you, you tend to have a different mentality about – 
uh, about challenges in life and stuff like that. And so um, it's really cool to watch because when you're around that, that's a form of confidence. It's very quiet and calm. It's actually uh, probably the most um, genuine form of comp- of confidence because it's not cocky. It doesn't come out boastful. It's very just action. It's just, you just move. It's really cool to see that. Uh, Adam is uh, very, very growth oriented. So growth oriented that he'll put himself in situations that um, are extremely challenging for him. And he just, he just puts himself there and then decides he's going to, he's going to, you know, embark on this journey, whatever that may be, whether it be a journey of mobility or a journey of changing his, uh, his nutrition or, you know, going off the hormones, whatever it may be, he tends to go for it and it sucks. And you can see that it sucks for him. So it's not like he's doing it and it's easy. Um, but it's cool to watch somebody else do that because it makes you feel, um, more, I guess, more confident in, in doing that for yourself. Um, and I'm going to throw Doug in here. When I first started training Doug, uh, years ago, I saw Doug, uh, I first met Brianna, maybe that's his daughter, maybe a year after I think I was training him. And I never seen a person as parent as well as Doug does. Like the guy just, he communicates so well and the level of patience that he demonstrates with his kid is just insane. Like I have a, I, I, you know, I try to be a good parent too, but I could definitely lose my temper. I can definitely be short. And so I remember early on, watching Doug parent uh, his daughter in a way that was just super patient, super calm, like intelligent, uh, loving. And I was like, well, this guy's like, I got to learn to be more like that because I tend to lose my temper a little bit too often. And I still watch him. I still watch him as a dad. And I'm still blown away. Like this guy never- Well, I think it's important to note too how he took Brianna on too because that was one of the things that blew me oh, away. Oh, crazy. When- I just assume that like that's like came from him, right? That that, that this child was his child that he had. It, no, he treats not, her. I don't know if you, if you if you mind mind me sharing that. No, it's not his. It's not it's not his daughter. He was dating someone who was pregnant, and and they had the baby, and Doug fell in love with the kid, and broke up with the mom. So he's not even with her now. Most men, most people, and would be like, I'm out of here. Like I'm not gonna. I'm this is not my kid. I don't need to take care of you know the situation. Shit, a lot of dads do that when they are the the, the parent, right? Or when they've been around their kid for you know years. You know, Doug fell in love with the kid and is like, "Man, I love this kid. I, I I'd like to stick around if that's okay." And, and because he's a total value add, and let me tell you, your ex really won out. Not that she's a terrible person. I don't know her, but to find someone like you who's willing to step in, I mean, just incredible. So watching Doug parent like that was uh, uh just was awesome for me to watch and i try to do that i try you know I, I find myself doing that i'll see someone do something and then they become my mentor without even realizing i just mm-hmm. observe and watch and so that's been that's what's been cool about about doing this with you guys and then of course with the guests that we have we have guests that come on the show that in one way or another are pretty remarkable so when i get to spend two hours with them like they don't even know it but i'm like Oh, just, yeah, we're taking, I'm, taking yeah, I'm, from them. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, what can I take from this person and learn? Yep. Because if you do that with life, I tell you what, man, it's pretty amazing. You find out. I mean, you got to be, you got to have a little bit of humility to admit that you can learn from someone else, first of all. Mm-hmm. So if you think you're awesome and you, and you know everything, well, then forget it. It's not going to happen. You're not getting anywhere. No, but if you meet someone and you admit to yourself, like, that person is a better parent than me in this particular aspect, or that person, you know, they they, they seem to be calm under pressure better than I am in that situation or that person can handle challenges and adversity, you know, uh, more readily than I do, um, especially in those situations. So when you observe that, then say, okay, cool. How can I learn from this person? And when you do that, it's pretty fucking awesome. So I, I would go as far to say that this group of guys is the most confident, humble men that I've ever worked with in my life. And actually you could even throw some of our you know, every, outside of this, just the four of us and our team are some of the most confident yet humble people um, I've ever been around. It's and it's rare to get that that mix right. Mm-hmm. So confident mm-hmm. that you you know what you can accomplish by yourself, but then humble enough to work as a team with others and let others lead at certain times. Uh, you just really rare, really really rare to find that. Um, and I've worked with a lot of a lot of. It's great- also challenging. I'll tell you something right now. Yeah. You know, people might think like, "Oh, cool, I'm going to work with a bunch of, gro- you know, growth minded, uh, yeah, you know, it's not easy. <laughs> Actually, it's it's hard. It's the hardest because 
it challenges push each other because if you don't grow, yeah. you're left in the dust. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you're the you're the you're the weak link, and nobody right. wants to be nobody the weak wants link. to be that guy. No, so you're like fuck. Okay, well I guess I better like up my game. And it's not just about work; it's about everything, right? How you behave, how you mm-hmm. the things you learn, the things you try to bring to the show or whatever. So it's uh, it's it's fun. It's challenging. It's fun. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. That's for sure. All right. Next question is: My life is Adams. Oh, okay. Oh wow. <laughs> is that is that right? <laughs> Since you guys advocate such a holistic approach towards fitness and diet, what are your thoughts on natural healing? Do you believe in these conspiracies about natural ways cancer or other deadly diseases are healed? So before Sal gets all sciencey, maybe he can and maybe he can uh, speak to what I'm going to talk about. I had this, I've had this different view about uh, taking care of the body ever since I got into marijuana, and I'll explain that. Uh, when I first got into growing, I didn't fucking know anything. I don't have a grow, green thumb. On it, so what do I do? I go to the local bookstore and I just start reading, you know, trying to figure this all out. And quickly I was drawn to it because there were so many things that have parallels to the body as far as like the three major major macronutrients for the body to grow and strengthen are similar to like what the plant has. And so I became very fascinated with this and started to go deeper and deeper and uh, I became what you would call like a master grower. Like I was really good at what I did for as short of a time that I was doing it. Um, but one of the things that w- that fascinated me the most that made that I learned about the plant that made me kind of go back to the body and go like, oh, I wonder if our bodies are a lot like this. And that was, you know, those that are familiar with, uh, you know, growing anything. You know, you worry about things like uh, spider mites, uh, over giving too much nutrients, not giving enough nutrients. Um, they can get mold too, right? Mold is very, uh, powder mold is very popular. You have all these different things that can be attacked, but caterpillars attack the plant. All these things can't, mites uh, can attack the, the plant. And obviously, if you're growing something and trying to produce something good that tastes good or that whatever produces well or top notch, like it being attacked by pest is not ideal. And so you spray all this stuff on that. We've got chemical sprays to kill this and chemical sprays of this. But if you're trying to grow something organically, you don't want to use these things. So you have to become creative and figure this out. Well, something that I remember reading and putting together was that your plant will never be attacked by any of these things if it's truly in homeostasis. So if I can maintain the perfect temperature, the perfect humidity, the perfect amount of nutrients, the perfect amount of water for this plant, it will be resilient to all all other uh, disease and pests. And so natural defenses. Right. And so I remember that kind of this light bulb going off when I was learning that about the plants and thinking like, oh, I bet our bodies are not that much different. I bet if we would learn to just keep it in its optimal place as far as like feeding it nutritionally and taking care of it rest wise and strength and all these other things that build this resilient body. If I was optimizing all that, I wonder if I, if my body would be attacked by these diseases that we can't figure out. So that's just a, a wild thought that I personally. It's not wild. That's true. No. That's a hundred percent true, man. The, look at you, your, the, your body is invaded by viruses and bacteria every single day. You have cancer cells present in your body right now. Okay, Every, everybody does, but your immune system and your body clamp down, or those cancer cells kill themselves because your body's working the way it should. Right, you filter yourself. Or out. your immune system kills bacteria, or it kills those. You know, a, a healthy body is actually pretty amazing. It's actually a, a freaking miracle that we're we're sitting here talking right now, and we're not already dead. So it's pretty amazing as far as spontaneous healing is concerned, or natural healing. That is a documented fact. There are. Uh, many cases you could look it up where, and they call it spontaneous healing because we don't know what the what the cause is. But people will go in with a cancer mm. that's like, oh, it looks like your terminal breast cancer spread everywhere, and for whatever reason, it's, it goes away. It's just gone. It just goes away. They call it spontaneous healing because we don't know what's causing it, but something mm. caused it to to happen, mm-hmm. and then something caused it to go away. Now, do I think you can will your body to grow back a leg? Probably not. But then again. I don't think there's anybody's ever been able to really harness their body's systems willingly ever where they fully have control. Now, there are examples of like monks who they'll go and meditate naked in the snow for hours, not freeze to death. There's, you know, Wim Hof who's Mm -hmm. done ridiculous feats with, with his body. 
Um, you can do quite a bit with your body when you when you if, if you know how to work with it and manipulate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what are my thoughts on natural healing? I think personally, I definitely think there's it's probably it's the most powerful thing that you can harness, but it's also the most difficult thing to harness. Yeah, I think that we're just now kind of visiting a lot of ancient practices that um, you know they had a lot of effort in the direction of like your Wim Hofs and people that were trying to tap into the natural process of you mean we're starting to accept it I mean it's been around yeah. forever we're finally starting to well, kind I mean of- incorporate it with like western right. thinking so I think that yeah the, the word conspiracy I mean it, it it all depends on like how they're presenting it you know as far as like oh if, if they're just doing coffee enemas to cure cancer well it, you know that's that's something else I relate it back to the plants again right so I remember dialing my nutrients, dialing in the the room temperature, having everything all perfect, right? So my plant shouldn't be attacked. And then all of a sudden I'd run this cycle through and fuck, I get mold, you know? And then I start diving into like, where where was my humidity and what was happening? I was like, oh shit, you know, it was during the nights I was allowing it to drop too much. And so I make that one adjustment and then the very next cycle of plants, same genetics, same everything they've been no passed problem. on, no problems whatsoever. Was that miraculous? Mm-hmm. You know, was it something? No, it was like it was something that my body or my plants needed or that I was abusing or overdoing or whatever. And that one little adjustment all of a sudden made this yeah. miraculous change. To the, have- the problem is it's so complicated with humans yeah. because right. it's not just about like with a plant, you have these controllables, right, that you can do. With the human, you have all these controllables as well, but there's one controllable that is feels very uncontrollable and that's the your your how you think that's your mental state mm-hmm. your like what you're thinking so there's all these controllable factors like like perfect diet perfect activity sun exposure sleep like stress management happiness with life like exposure like, like, environmentally like, like, like those things you can control and those alone are very difficult like how many people are perfect in just their nutrition right those alone are very difficult but then you throw on top of it your mental state how you're thinking how you're feeling about things I mean, entire religions are created around mastering just that, and people devote their entire lives to master just that, and many, if not most, ever achieve it. I think the greatest people of all time are probably the people we read about in history books and religions who you know, do these miraculous things. Perhaps they were able to harness these types of things, but is it easy? Absolutely. Not even close. Like If you have an infection, go get antibiotics. Don't sit there and think... I'm gonna I'm gonna will myself to heal because the, the the difficulty of being able to do that is so high. You're probably not gonna fucking succeed, right. and you're probably gonna succumb to your infection. So that's the important thing to know. But I know I, I tell you what. Look, the placebo effect is is accounted for in mm-hmm. every single study because it's fucking real. Yeah, it's it real. Works. Why do they have to account for a placebo effect in actual trials with drugs? Because the belief that something is working actually many times causes a positive effect and causes it to work. Mm-hmm. That's how powerful your, right. your what, thought process in your whether mind Whether you is. think you can or can't, you're probably right. That's it. So here's the thing. Like, what does this mean? Well, you know the physical, you know the nutritional stuff you need to do, you know about sleep and that kind of stuff, but how much time do you spend on your state of mind? Mm-hmm. Like that right there is, I think, the big mis- missing piece in a lot of people's arsenal, especially in... Fitness. Hmm. In fitness, we focus so heavily, and this is why I think there's so many eating disorders and so many issues, mental issues, and people in fitness, because they focus on the fitness side of it, but they forget the the mindfulness or the 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 they forget the mental aspect or the spiritual aspect or whatever. I mean, for thousands of years, people a, a spiritual practice was a part of a person's life, and it was a part of a person's health. And we've we've thrown that part away, mm-hmm. but that's also that's also very important. Like taking time aside to focus on that that aspect of you can have far-reaching effects on your health. And look, science science supports it. People who have those kind of practices tend to live longer and tend to be healthier. So no, I don't deny at all that our bodies have have incredible capability to heal uh, disease and illness um, and, and even injury. But I think we are completely infantile in our understanding 
of those kinds oh, of yeah. things. Well, there's just so many, like you brought up. I mean, I was using the plant as a comparison, and I know it's it, somewhat, it's a terrible comparison because the body is so much more complex. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, there's so many more, there's so many more switches. There's so many, so many variables. So that's the part where when you talk about like natural healing, well, I, I don't think that, you know, and the person's talking about cancer, right? So you you have a like, let's say we talk about a t- or a type of a disease, right? We have a, a specific disease that this person, well, this person got healed because they all of a sudden started eating orange peels. Like, does that mean like eating orange peels for everybody <laughs> all of a sudden? Is gonna, like, no, it's like maybe there was something missing in that person's life or diet or like you said, their mind that changed their attitude to right. be positive that did that. So what I don't like is attaching some of these holistic, natural ways. To you know, to fight cancer and that and into umbrella and under is like, oh, this will help people, all people that have cancer. Well, you know, maybe it may help that person. It's really about figuring out what what, what missing piece are you missing and, and trying to address that. Exactly. Hey, check it out. Go to our uh, podcast app. Leave us a review. You could win a T-shirt. Also, uh, leave us a review or get our podcast app. Excuse me. If you go to the uh, the app store, you can get the Mind Pump Media app and you can search for topics and listen to specific episodes where we cover those specific topics. And of course, like I said earlier, leave us a review. You might get a free t-shirt. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.